Hello, I'm Maria Fresina, exactly from the YouTube studio in the public firm of NATO. And now I want to welcome you, Señor José Manuel Alvarez. My Espanol is un poquito <laughs> mejor. <laughs> it sounds very good. <laughs> I, I love it. Minister of Foreign Affairs, European Union and Cooperation. Hello, thank you for finding time uh, to give uh, me some answers my for my questions. Last year, the summit uh, was in Madrid. Uh, you are here from the midday, yes, of today. Can you compare these uh, first days of summits this year and last year? Well, the difference is we were the host country and it was very much involved. Yeah. So I had been working for, for many weeks and, and in the previous day with a lot of work. The context is different. We had to give a completely new answer to uh, the security scenario in, in Europe. Uh, the Russian aggression had mm -hmm. just happened. We had to draft a new strategic concept. So we felt a little bit the responsibility and also the, 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 the weight of history, if we can call it that way. Uh, here in Vilna, we have already everything that was achieved and decided in, in Madrid at the time we had to create, to draft the strategic concept. We have to deal with uh, Sweden and Finland's uh, mm -hmm. demands of accession. We have to give a clear response to Russia to introduce the southern flag. All that is done. What we have to do here, and I find the same mood that we had in Madrid, is that sense of unity that remaining united around our values and also around Ukraine yeah. is the correct thing to do. Because both summits were uh, during the war in Ukraine, like last yes. year and he, now that was my question, how do you compare? So the accent on the war in Ukraine and the acceptance of, the Ukraine, to, of Ukraine to NATO now is uh, much more bigger and much more, I don't know how Accentuative. The answer to Russia and to the Russian aggression mm -hmm. was much more present in Madrid than today. Not because today is not present, but because we all are already doing a lot. We have a method for that. On the contrary, the accession of Ukraine was not the main topic uh, during Madrid summit, where here it's an important part of all our discussion and uh, it was not possible at the time to host President Zelensky in Madrid he uh, connected mm -hmm. but it yeah. was possible to be in person although he was invited and mm -hmm. we uh, will have the pleasure to, to meet him tomorrow once you said that um, the Spanish government was committed to dialogue as a distinguishing feature of European foreign policy, but that it had to be very clear with Russia. Dialogue, it's not negotiation. What is it? Dialogue and no negotiation. What is the difference? We can, of course, have a dialogue and we wish to have one day again a dialogue with Russia. Whatever happens, Russia will always be a neighbor. Of, of Europe and of European and Union, and there are many issues that we have to deal uh, together. But at the same time, we cannot negotiate. We cannot negotiate who can be a member of European Union or not, what European Union can do or cannot do. If we understand that both parties, then we can go into a dialogue. Looking at the, uh, what uh, Putin and his regime done for Ukraine for these 16 months, what dialogue can be done? What to talk with the monster and terrorists? What dialogue? At this very moment there is not much of a dialogue, mm -hmm. but we think that one day uh, the, the war will be over, I'm sure, and there will be a free, independent and sovereign Ukraine. I also was impressed by the information that he committed more than 250 million euros for recovery and reconstruction, including a new commitment of 7 million euros, uh, which you announced uh, um, were aimed to provide schools with shelters supporting victims of sexual violence in Ukraine. Uh, how it's going on? Do you know? There are two stages that we are doing. Once again, one day the war will be over and Ukraine will be again a uh, completely free and sovereign country. And we have to start to prepare for that moment, yeah. for reconstruction, for recovery. That's why we did that pledge in, in the conference for Ukraine. And at the same time, there are intermediate 
targets that we need to do uh, in order to allow the, uh, to, to this preparedness for reconstruction. One of them is to create schools in which even in the context of war, children can continue attending a school because they are the future of, of, course, that, yes. of that free and sovereign Ukraine. Why exactly sexual violence? This is a very um, um, like trigger topic for me because I am taking care about the victims of sexual violence. I, I mean, um, we call it war crimes because they are made by uh, Russian soldiers. And uh, I was really surprised, greatly surprised, that the uh, Spanish government is taking care about this topic. Uh, everything related to sexual crimes are uh, especially terrible in yeah. war times. We know that when wars start, are always children and women that yeah. are the first victims, and these uh, type of uh, war crimes are especially horrible. So they need a special protection. And we have a certain experience in dealing with it, and our development agency has already worked in other war contexts in the world, and we decided to put this also at the disposal of Ukraine. That's how we came out with this program. Perfect. I'm happy to hear this because we have a great um, number of victims and yes. it increases greatly, especially I'm, I'm sure when we deoccupy our territories, this number will, will increase. So I'm sure that your program will, will be very useful for us. So um, you also mentioned that um, Spanish businesses can share their experience. What did you mean? We have uh, a part of our international companies that are used to do uh, heavy infrastructure work around the world, building roads, uh, ports, uh, and of course with the degree of destruction that we are finding in many parts of Ukraine, they can be helpful when the moment of reconstruction we will come. And they have that knowledge. Other countries are specialized in finance or in services. Mm -hmm. We have companies that can do that type of heavy works that will be really, really required for the infrastructure of Ukraine. Is it possible to start to reconstruct during the war or just after the, all the process over? It's complicated to, to do it right now because we don't know how the war is going mm -hmm. to evolve. But definitely there is a minimum that we must guarantee in order to guarantee access to water and electricity mm -hmm. to all Ukrainians. So of course that part we can do it. Thank you. It sounds very optimistic and hopeful. Thank you so much. I see the signs that I have to <laughs> let it go. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Un placer.